What's going on guys? My name is Brandon and a viewer wanted to know about welding cast iron with 6013 welding rods. Well, today we're going to find out and we're going to measure the results. I forewarn you, some of you in this video are going to be triggered. If you guys have been following my cast iron welding series, you'll know that we've been welding cast iron using different processes and different filler metals. And then when we're all done with the repair, we test it out to see just how strong it is before it breaks. Now we all know that brazing cast iron is a really good repair, maybe one of the best. And we all know that using nickel rod is also a good repair. And we've tested that when we use the muggy weld rods. If you haven't seen that video, it's right up above. The thing has like 1.4 million views so it's a fairly popular video on the internet for some reason whenever I do a welding video with cast iron if it's not with one of those processes or filler metals it seems to ruffle a lot of feathers and I don't know why today we're gonna add another filler material to that mix and we're gonna test it out and we're gonna prove it either it works or it doesn't and if it does work how strong is it compared to some of the other methods we've tried so what do you say we get into it and let's get going so here we are guys we got our broken pan and we're going to name this guy triggered uh, and the reason he's triggered is because he knows that we're going to be doing it with something unconventional and he doesn't like that so the first thing we got to do guys is we've got to get this joint all prepped and beveled out and we'll do that with a grinder all i'm doing here is just beveling out the joint no different than what you'd be doing if you were welding on mild steel the difference is, is I'm using an abrasive wheel and there is some technical data that says that using an abrasive wheel can force in contamination into the joint. So for a cleaner joint, and if it was a mission critical part, uh, what it really calls for is to use like a cold chisel and chip it to bevel it rather than using a grinder. But I haven't experienced any issues with using a grinder, so that's what we're doing here today. Now you can see what we've got for a fit up. Uh, we've got a few little gaps here and there, but everything's all beveled. Uh, so that the weld metal's got a place to go. For this repair, I'm going to be running 16th inch 6013 electrodes, and I'm going to be running this electrode negative. If you want to know why I'm doing it that way, I'll put a link up above. I've gone in depth with some comparison welds, welding thin metal using both electrode positive and electrode negative. The reasons will be evident within that video. These electrodes, they suggest a current rating between 20 and 45 amps. So we're gonna go at the low end of that and we're gonna be at 20. For this repair, I'm gonna be using my DC stick welder. This is without a doubt, hands down, my favorite welder. This has arc force and it has hot start. It's just a very smooth, crisp uh, starting weld. And for that reason, this is always my go-to welder. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this tacked up so we can get a preheat on it. So now that my piece is tacked together, you could preheat this in a bunch of different ways. You could put this in a barbecue grill, you could put this on a bed of coals, uh, you could put this in an oven. Uh, the key is, is that you want to get this material up to roughly, say, 350, maybe a little hotter degrees Fahrenheit. And what that does is, is that uh, lessens the chance of the thermal shock. So you're going from a piece of metal that's at room temperature, and then you're striking an arc on it, and then it's immediately jumping to you know thousands of degrees, and then it's cooling back down. If you can heat up the metal and heat up your part to a temperature that, that is less of a temperature swing, the chances of the metal cracking are a lot lessened and that's one of the reasons why we also uh, at the end of the repair we insulate it either in an insulating blanket or in dry sand that way it retains the heat holds the heat in and it allows it to cool uh, at an even temperature slowly again lessening the chances of cracking so what I do here is I'm just welding like a quarter of an inch at a time and then I peen the weld to help normalize it and then I'm gonna wire brush it. And then I repeat that process again, welding a quarter of an inch, peening it to help normalize, and then wire brushing. Whenever I stick weld cast iron, I get a lot of one-liner comments, like porosity or pinholes. Well, 
we're stick welding cast iron so yeah you're gonna get those things whenever you float the metal or material which is what we're doing here by stick welding all the impurities are gonna float to the top and cast iron is generally a dirty material which is why it's often more acceptable within the trades that brazing is believed to be more reliable because when you're brazing you're not wetting the base metal you're not bringing the impurities to the surface you're actually just basically dropping in the filler metal. So yes, whenever you stick weld cast iron, be prepared to see pinholes and porosity. You're gonna get them. Uh, it's the way it is, but in my experience with welding it, very seldom if ever will the joint fail on the weld. It's gonna fail next to it, so porosity is not your enemy. What we need to be concerned about is our heat input. And there we are. Not pretty, but repairing cast iron isn't. Now this cast iron pan is extremely hot right now, so we'll let it sit in this sand and let it normalize. It's going to be several hours before it's room temperature. What I'll do is I'll come back in about two hours and I know the repair is over here. So I'll come back in about two hours and I'll stick my finger in over here and see if the part's still hot. And Then I'll just slowly work my way over until I'm finally right on top of the weld. Obviously if you're in the middle and it's still too hot to put your hand on it then you know you gotta come back way too longer but uh, you don't want to uncover this. You could also wrap this in a uh, welder's blanket too. That works well. This is the sand I use. It's just quick creep play sand. It's a 50 pound bag. I was told that this uh, from certain plants has gold in it. This sand. I'm not advocating repairing a cast iron pan. The reason I'm using this is so that it takes away any speculation that this is made of anything other than cast iron. That way we're all in the same playing field. I think we can agree that a pan that says it's made of cast iron is actually made of cast iron. All right, it's been a few hours later. Parts all cooled down. Ah, he's still upset. That's too bad. Well, let's see how upset he's gonna be. Let's give it a test. And if you guys are wondering just how thick the uh, pan is that we're fixing. It's right around eighth inch. All right, let's get this thing clamped up. Some of you guys are probably wondering why I didn't weld it on both sides. If you want to know if welding cast iron on both sides is stronger, I'll put a link up above and I'll have one down in the description. We've already tested that also. For you guys that follow me on Facebook and on Instagram, it'll be too late by the time you see this, but I'm going to put a poll up and see if anyone can guess what this breaks at. And I will announce the winner on Instagram and on Facebook. It'll just be for fun. Alright guys, so here's the setup. We've got it clamped to the bench and I have a bucket that has a little bit of sand suspended underneath the bottom of it. I have no idea how much sand this weighs right now. But what we're going to do is we're going to keep adding weight and adding sand until eventually this pan will break. And then we'll measure it up and see how heavy the bucket is. Just to show you that the bucket is suspended, you can see that it's hanging, free hanging off the bottom of that pan. 17 pounds right here. That's a lot of weight guys. Alright, so this is what we add in little bits at a time until it busts. That was fun.
100 pounds. I was not expecting that. That's a total surprise. Let's go take a real close up look at our cast iron and see where it failed. This is pretty consistent from what we've seen on all the other repairs. It didn't necessarily break at the weld joint, it broke next to it. So here you can see all the new metal that's broken. This is not the weld, this is actually the pan itself. More evidence of it right here where it's actually cracked the pan further, uh, creating additional stress in it. That's pretty consistent with what we've been seeing. So are you ready to find out how this compares to the other tests we've done? In order of best to worst, uh, the Muggy Weld TIG welding resulted in 114.6 pounds or 51.92 kilograms. Flux core welding it on both sides resulted in 114.6, same test. 7018, 104.8, what we just did here, 6013, DC electronegative, 100 pounds. Or flux core, just welding it one side, was 91.4. So if you're wondering if welding something on both sides makes a difference, 91.4 if you weld it on one side, and 114.6 if you weld it on both. So there you go guys, those are just some of my conclusions that I've come up with in doing this cast iron welding testing. Do you guys have a process or a technique that you'd like me to test? Drop it down in the comments. Hopefully this gives you guys some confidence to know that if you have a piece of cast iron, depending on what it is you have from materials and equipment that you own, that you know how successful your repair could be compared to other processes and what fill of metal and what process would be the best. I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you want to know what I'm working on before it even makes it up to YouTube, you guys can catch me on Facebook and on Instagram. I'll leave the links down below. I'm always posting there before it makes it up here. If this is something that you like, please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Until next week, guys, I'll see you then. Stay safe, take care, see ya.